Kuzambala, welcome to Bataan e-learning program. This is science session, key stage three for classes seven and eight. In the last session, or in one of the science sessions, you all talked about digestion. And there, you all learned that the ultimate product of digestion is the digested food. Now, I'm pretty sure that most of you must be wondering what happens to the digested food after the digestion, where does it go? What happens when it reaches there? Don't worry, you'll get all the answers today here in this session. And the session that we're going to talk about today is respiratory system. Before going on to the respiratory system, let me just tell you what all you'll be learning today in this session. So the first thing that you all should know after learning this session is First thing, you should know how to explain respiration in your own words. Second thing is, there's a general equation for respiration that you should be able to write it. Third one is, you should be able to identify the organs which are there, which are involved in respiration. The fourth one is, you should talk about the organs which are there, which helps you to undergo respiration. Fifth one is, you should be able to draw the relationship between respiration and breathing. Now, when I say breathing, I purposefully came with this topic because there is a common misconception amongst the students. They think that breathing is similar to respiration, which I am going to clarify here today. Breathing is just taking in and out of air, whereas respiration is a complex process which takes a very long time. So when you talk about breathing, it's taking in and taking out. So when we take in, the other word you can have for breathing in is inspiration, or you can also call it as inhalation. When we breathe out air, we call it as expiration, or you can also call it as exhalation. Now there are some basic differences between inhalation and exhalation. Inhalation, whenever we breathe in, you might have experienced to yourself, you're given more oxygen and the air which goes inside your respiratory system when you're inspiring, that is usually cooler and it contains more of oxygen. Whereas for expiration, you give out more of carbon dioxide and you can practically do it. If you just blow your breath on your palm, you'll feel that the air which usually comes out, it is warmer than the air which you usually take in. But during inspiration, there are certain vital organs which play a very significant role in inspiration. The first thing you have is the ribs, you have your lungs, and you have your diaphragm. Now you must be wondering what is a diaphragm? It's nothing but it's just a muscular sheath which will um, divide your upper body from your lower body. Now when you're inspiring, what happens is you can literally feel that your ribs, it comes out and inside your lungs, it takes in more air and it gets inflated. Now once it gets inflated, you should know that your diaphragm, it flattens up. When it flattens up, the whole chest body, the chest cavity, it increases. And because of the low pressure here, you see that whenever you're inspiring, more air gets inside your lungs. And during expiration, just the opposite thing happens. During expiration, you can, you can practice along with me. Just try to breathe out. When you breathe out, what happened to your ribs? It went inward. And your lungs, it got deflated, as well as your diaphragm, it came to its dome shape. After that, now what you should know that there are many respiratory organs, which actually helps you to undergo respiration. Now when you have the respiratory organs, the first thing you should think, you should think about is the nose because this is where the whole thing starts. So you breathe in, you breathe out. Breathing in and breathing out has to happen through the nose only. Then you have your fangs, which is an empty cavity. Then uh, below fangs, you have your lungs. After lungs, you should know that you have a windpipe, a very important part of your respiratory system, which is also known as trachea. And trachea, when it reaches to your two lungs, you should know that it divides into bronchi. 
Now you have two lungs, your right and your left lungs. So of course your trachea will get divided into right bronchi and left bronchi. Now when the bronchi finally enters your lungs, there they will have so many branches. Ultimately, your entire respiratory system ends up in the structural and functional unit of the respiratory system, which you call it as alveoli. Alveoli, they are simply air sacs and they are very important for your respiratory system because this is where the whole gaseous exchange takes place. Now I talked about the respiratory organs, now let's talk about their functions. You have nose, it's very simple, it's a pathway for your air to enter as well as exit the respiratory system. You have fangs, which is also helping you to regulate the passage of air in lungs. You have trachea, yes, you call it as a windpipe, that also helps for the air to enter and exit the lungs. It will also help to connect your throat. Now, you must be wondering, where is the throat? Throat is a combination of your lungs and fangs. So you, in combination, you call it as throat. So your trachea is there to connect these two parts to your lungs. Other one you have is bronchi. Like I said, bronchi, it also serves as a passageway of air. Then you have alveoli. I already mentioned it helps in gaseous exchange. You have the lungs where the entire gaseous exchange takes place. Then you have the diaphragm. It helps in expanding. It will expand and contract so that it can have a vacuum effect in pulling in and pulling out of air. Now, I have purposefully came with breathing like I mentioned in the early part of the session because breathing is important for your respiratory system. When you breathe in and breathe out, you're actually facilitating respiration to take place. But before respiration to take place, there should be an exchange of gases. Now for that gases, you'll see that you have a diagram there and you have alveoli and alveoli is always surrounded by network of blood capillaries. Now when you breathe in, you're actually giving in more oxygen. Now that oxygen, it finally enters your alveoli and your blood capillaries, they're busy flowing with blood. And you'll see that the blood, it will make a cross, it will make a round of your alveoli. Now the reason there is, it's mainly to serve the purpose of gaseous exchange. Now when you breathe in, you have more oxygen in the alveoli and the blood capillaries, which are the blood which is flowing there in the blood capillaries, they have got more of carbon dioxide. Now, here you should know that the blood capillaries, they also have very limited amount of oxygen. Now, just compare the concentration of oxygen in the alveoli and in the blood capillaries. You, oh, you have learned this in lower classes that gases the gas molecules, they have the tendency to move from higher concentration to lower concentration. So since there is high concentration of oxygen in alveoli comparing to the blood capillary, oxygen automatically diffuses from the alveolar sac and it enters the blood capillaries. Then to compare the concentration of carbon dioxide, it is more in the blood capillaries than the alveoli. So because of the difference in concentration of carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide will automatically diffuse from the blood capillaries to the alveoli and it will take the backward direction and this is how you finally give out carbon dioxide. Now finally, the oxygen which enters the ca blood capillaries, the blood will take it to the cells where the cells are waiting for oxygen to oxidize the digested food. Now when that happens, what you should know here is the entire respiration takes place inside the cell. Now from here you will talk about respiration. Now respiration is a biological process where the food, the digested food is oxidized in the presence of oxygen and the main purpose of respiration is to give you energy and you have a byproduct of respiration that is carbon dioxide. Now when we talk about respiration, there are two types of respiration. You have aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration is the type of respiration which takes place in the presence of 
oxygen and anaerobic respiration is a type of respiration which takes place in the absence of oxygen. Now, aerobic respiration is same in both plants and animals. You do not have to get confused about it. Aerobic respiration is a type of respiration which takes place in the presence of oxygen. You'll see at the back that you have the general equation and you should know the equation with the balanced number of molecules. And it is same for both plants and animals. But when it comes to anaerobic respiration, there's a bit difference. In anaerobic respiration in animals, you'll see that there's a production of an acid known as lactic acid. And this is the reason why you'll see that you must have seen your friends also, or you must have experienced yourself. When you run for a longer period of time, you'll feel a certain cramp on your calf, or you experience fatigue. That is all because your muscle cells in your skeletal system, they are undergoing anaerobic respiration. So they are trying to keep you up. They are trying to help you to run for a longer time by undergoing anaerobic respiration. But anaerobic respiration cannot take place for a longer period of time because of the production of lactic acid. So you somehow land up getting muscle cramps and fatigue. Whereas in plants, anaerobic respiration results in the production of an alcohol known as ethanol. You might have seen in your household, your mother might be preparing local alcohol. So you might have seen her using yeast. So yeast is used in the preparation of alcohol because it undergoes fermentation. So fermentation, after it undergoes fermentation, it will help in the production of alcohol. So fermentation is a very good example of anaerobic respiration in plants. Now, you'll also see that there's the general equation of anaerobic respiration in plants and animals. After learning this, you should be in a position to differentiate anaerobic respiration in plants, anaerobic respiration, and aerobic respiration. So for that, you can just recollect the lesson and try to differentiate yourselves between aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. Now, we have been talking about aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. To make it clearer for you all, I have a table which talks about the differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. As you can see, aerobic respiration occurs in presence of oxygen. Anaerobic respiration occurs in absence of oxygen. Aerobic respiration produces more energy. You'll see, it, you'll see it in a bracket. You have 38 molecules of ATP. I hope by now you know the full form of ATP. It's the energy currency of the cell, which stands for adenosine triphosphate. Anaerobic respiration produces less energy, very minimum amount of energy, and that is only 2 ATP. In aerobic respiration, you have lactic acid. The production is not there, whereas for anaerobic respiration, you have the production of lactic acid. For aerobic respiration, it's same for both plants and animals, but for anaerobic respiration, there's a difference. In animals, lactic acid is produced, and in plants, you have ethanol getting produced. You also have carbon dioxide getting produced in animals. Then in aerobic respiration, where does it occur in a cell? To be very specific, it occurs in cytoplasm and mitochondria. And anaerobic respiration occurs only in cytoplasm. Now, we are done with the breathing session. We are also done with the respiration session. And if you are still with me, I talked about the common misconception we have amongst the students regarding the definition of breathing and respiration. Whenever I ask my students to define respiration, they somehow land up defining breathing. Now you all must be wondering that they are completely, whether they are completely different or not. They are not completely different. There is a correlation between breathing and respiration. So how are they related? You'll see that whenever you inhale, what are you doing? You're inspiring, and that is a part of breathing. Now, when you inspire, the ultimate goal is you'll see that your oxygen gets inside your lungs. And from there, the, you'll see that the gaseous exchange takes place. From After gaseous exchange, 
the oxygen will be taken to your cells and your cells will finally undergo respiration. So you have a relation. If there is no breathing, there is no respiration taking place. So they are co-related. And let's talk about some common ill effects of smoking on lungs because we are talking about respiratory system it's very important for us to maintain a healthy respiratory system and i have came up with this topic because i wanted you all to know what smoking does to your respiratory system especially to the primary respiratory organ those are your lungs so what does it do to your lungs you'll you'll have different respiratory diseases if you land up smoking you will have you can suffer from emphysema that is you will have shortness of breath the worst thing you can have is you can land up getting lung cancers you'll see that your alveoli your cells they will start degenerating degenerating means they will slowly start dying so when your cells die ultimately you are going to die so when your cell ceases the organism ceases there are so many effects of smoking you can explore yourself but i came up with some crucial some vital ill effects of smoking to your lungs now how can you maintain a healthy respiratory system you can there here also you have ample of options where you can maintain a healthy respiratory system now if i just suggest some can maintain a healthy diet you can have healthy exercises you can drink more water you can maintain good hygiene you can have you can be um, a very active person not lying around the sofa and then not doing anything at all then the other one is avoid smoking the primary thing you can do to have a healthy respiratory system is completely avoid smoking Okay, that's it for the session but before winding up let's recollect what we have been talking about so the key points that you all should be taking away from this session are breathing helps in respiration breathing involves inhalation and exhalation nose fangs trachea lungs and alveoli are organs that assist respiration air inhaled has more oxygen and the air exhaled has more carbon dioxide Respiration is the process of releasing energy by oxidation of food. There are two types of respiration, aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Respiration provides energy for doing daily activities. Before finally winding up, I'll give you a very small activity. You have three questions. Question number one, how does understanding respiration help in maintaining of a person's health? Number two, a person experiences cramp in her leg while running in a marathon. Why? Number three, yeast is used in making bread. Explain why. These are very simple questions. If you have been attentive enough throughout the session, thank you so much for attending the session. That's it for today. Thank you so much. I hope you all might have enjoyed the lesson. Please, regarding the three questions, go through your textbook. You can explore through the internet or you can ask your teachers. I wish you a very happy learning.